So our next extension two topic is extending this idea of vectors. First of all, we're going to take a look at moving from two dimensions to three dimensions. We've been working with the Cartesian plane, which as we know has a X and the Y axis, but it's basically a flat shape, a two dimensional figure. So it has two axes, X and Y. It has one coordinate plane, and that is divided into four quadrants. First quadrant where they're both positive, and then we go round uh, in an anti-clockwise manner, naming the four quadrants. And a particular point is uniquely defined by an ordered pair. It has an X value and a Y value. Well, now we're moving into three dimensions. So we have a Cartesian space. Uh, so in three dimensions, you'll notice my coordinate plane or Cartesian plane is lying flat, if you like. And we then have a third axis going through the origin, the Z axis going vertically up. So this is the orientation we normally draw our, uh, our three-dimensional Cartesian space. It now has three axes, the X, the Y, and the Z. It has three coordinate planes. The one we're used to seeing, X, Y, but it now has a Y, Z plane and an X, Z plane. And we now, instead of having four quadrants, have eight octants. So like the, uh, the plane, we start where they're all positive, and then we rotate around where Z is positive, so the top, if you like, of our space. And then we drop down below it for octants five to eight. A point is uniquely defined now, but not by an ordered pair. It's now an ordered triple. So we need three numbers to define a point. Sometimes when drawing these, the addition of a, a rectangular prism uh, makes it a bit easier to work out where the point actually is in the space. Because whilst we're looking at three dimensions, we're still drawing it on a flat piece of paper. So once I've got that prism drawn in, the diagonal that goes from the origin to our point gives me some sort of sense of where it's sitting in space. Okay. Well, lines parallel to the coordinate axes. We saw that in two dimensions. There's my point P, which is 2, 3. If it's parallel to the x-axis, we get y as a constant. In this case, y is 3. Parallel to the y-axis, we get x as a constant. So x is 2. Well, now we go to our, our plane, and it's the same sort of idea, but we don't have lines parallel to the coordinate axes. We now have planes parallel to coordinate planes. So the plane parallel to the xy plane would be z equals a constant. So it's sitting flat, if you like, sitting above the uh, coordinate axes. Uh, this one here would have the equation z equals 1. Parallel to the xz plane then would be y is a constant one. So if I draw that one in, and it's, it's looking like it's a vertical plane, I guess, uh, that would have equation y equals 3. And then if I have uh, one parallel to the yz plane, let's call it x equals uh, capital C. So on my picture, there it is, the green one coming through, and that would be x equals 2. So a similar idea to when we had a number plane. All right, well, how do we find things like distance and midpoints? Distance formula we know in 2D, there it is, square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Well, in three dimensions, what happens? I want to find the distance between these two points in space. So the distance between the two PQ. Okay, I'll just draw up a rectangular prism here. So the question really is, what's the length of the diagonal of this prism? Well, I could find the length of the diagonal at the base of the prism. The height of my prism will be Z2 minus Z1. Now, if I project that triangle down onto the XY axis, so I can work out the length of that diagonal. Now that triangle that I've dropped down we know the side lengths of those would be y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1. So the length of the diagonal is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared and so on. In other words, our traditional two-dimensional distance formula. So now, if I want to find the length of PQ, well, it'll be the square root, using Pythagoras, of those two sides. Now what happens here is very nice, 
the one where I've used the distance formula, it's now squared. So the square root sign goes away. And you see, we end up with a formula which is very similar to the traditional distance formula. All we've added in is the difference between the z coordinates squared. Well, how about midpoint? Remember, it's the average of the two points. So x1 plus x2 on 2, y1 plus y2 on 2 is what we used in two dimensions. In three dimensions, once again, that idea flows through very nicely. It's still the average of the two points. So now we also average the z values. Okay, well, let's start with 5a and see if we can get our heads around working with three-dimensional space. 